Hi everyone, this is Younes. I'm going to do a demo of R20 Exporter and R20 Converter. Um, this is a couple of tools that allow me to convert from using Roll20 to Foundry VTT. So let's start by just showing you the Foundry VTT um, application here. The worlds directory you can see here is empty and there are no worlds in it. And so I'm in Roll20, I'm going to convert my Curse of Strahd game that you see has you know plenty of pages, plenty of journals, characters, um, music. So the first thing we need to do is install R20 Converter. So go to github.com slash kakroto slash R20 Exporter. Install Temper Monkey. If you don't have it already, just click this link here. The readme file explains everything. And then we can click on this right here and click Install. And that's it. It just installed it. Now we just reload the page, and as the the Roll20 page reloads, you can see here Temper Monkey Roll20 Campaign Exporter is activated, and that means that we'll have Export Campaign to Zip. So the first thing to do is make sure that we wait long enough for the entire campaign to load because it will take some time. Roll20 is a little slow, so we shouldn't jump right ahead and click on export campaign. We need to wait a little bit. Um, but actually, in my case, uh, I have some archived pages, so it's already going to wait for them to load uh, plenty of time. So we can just go ahead and do that, and then it will start to um, uh, export my campaign to a zip file. I already done that before the video, so I have my curse of zip file, 1.3 gigabytes of data uh, ready to go. So the second step is going to patreon.com slash kakaroto and grabbing R20 converter. I just released the 0.6 version, which adds a lot of things, and then clicking on the zip file download here, we can just download the R20 converter. And I'm just going to show you what's in it. Uh, there's a readme file, which I opened here. You can see it explains how to use it and a few different things. Um, there's a source directory. If you are a developer, you can look at the source code and um, see how I uh, do the conversion. There's a Windows directory, which is what you'll probably be using. And R20 converter, we can just open it and it will of this new graphical user interface. So first we're going to go here and select our Curse of Strahd zip file and open it. The second thing we're going to do is select our worlds, um, uh, our Foundry VTT path. So you can see I have it in F. It's just easier to type. Games FVTT dev. And the third important step is to give a name to our world, so Curse of Strata. So there are quite a few different options, so uh, export as a module uh, instead of a world. If I had already an existing world and I didn't want to create a new one, but just um, grab the NPCs, monsters, some journal entries, maybe a specific scene from uh, um, my uh, uh, Curse of Strahd world, can see here it's uh, exporting saving all the pages it did the handouts characters now it's taking care of the pages um, so yeah if I wanted to uh, just grab a specific scene or uh, specific monsters I can just enable this and it will export it as a module instead and everything will be available as compendium packs um, all right so uh, the name here, uh, I can set a password for the GM or for all the players. Restrict movements because World 20 by default, uh, I don't think it enables restriction of movement um, on its uh, pages. Add walls around map, this will just add. Um, also, you can use the side table. Um, enable fog because advanced fog of war is usually disabled on World 20 because it's such uh, an expensive feature, um, both in terms of uh, um, resources and uh, uh, non-free option. Clean up scenes, auto doors. Auto doors will automatically de detect which walls are actually doors based on their colors. Or you can just specify the color here. Let's say I can do red. So any red walls um, will be considered as doors. 
minimum wall length and minimum wall uh, maximum wall angle. So this is for um, cave like um, uh, maps where you have a lot of small uh, lines. You can say I want uh, 35 pixels minimum uh, length for all my walls. Uh, but if you have like a small square on a column or something like that, so if the angle between two walls is above 30 degrees, uh, it will uh, not uh, break that wall. It won't merge them, uh, which is useful to uh, decrease the number of walls in uh, cave-like maps. Images, drawings, list of handout folders to convert into items. So magic items will automatically be converted into a um, into items so there I can click convert and let's see here there you go it's converting my handouts then it's going to do my characters there you go and after that it's going to take care of the scenes and you can already see the worlds here curse of Torah was just created so you can see here in the scenes um, it's going a little fast maybe so let me just uh, see if I can pause it and I think here perfect so you can see here for example um, dead house dungeon so you have it detects 297 lines as green and 10 lines as red so it considers the red walls as being doors and here, the werewolf then, you can see that it's considering 35 pixels minimum length, 30 degrees maximal angle, and it just reduced my 881 walls into 596 walls instead. Um, and that's why I, I waited a little bit before I, I stopped it, because I wanted to, to show you the werewolf then, which, which is the whole reason why I moved away from Roll20 in favor of Foundry VTT, because that map was just unable to load on um, Roll20. So there, it's done. I can click OK. It's, that's it. So I can open Foundry VTT now, and uh, we'll see what, uh, what it just converted for us. So my computer is a little old, so it can be a little bit slow. I apologize for that. All right. We've seen previously there was nothing. Now we have Curse of Strahd and we can launch that world uh, imported from World 20 using R20 Converter. And there you go. And there. Now I have all of my players and I have my own um, user here, which is the first one automatically set as the GM. that stop it there you go I had some music apparently playing on the other side all right so um, what do we have here we have our music we've already seen that it works all of my playlists are there um, we have the journals they're all right here um, let's see we can look at them I don't want to divulge any spoilers to the game if someone is looking but you have the um, the maps um, you have the uh, the journal entries um, a fun little thing with um, my uh, my furnace module you can do split journal and you can just split it uh, into separate journal entries um, for each area, which makes it much easier to, to navigate. Um, and then let's look at our characters here. Uh, you can see my character uh, here. It has everything, all the classes, um, all of its attributes, spellbook, inventory. Everything is just the way we left it on uh, Roll20. Uh, same goes for NPCs, of course. Um, we can have a look here. Same thing. 
and my pages. I have my archive scenes here. Uh, if we go look for the werewolf dem that I spoke about earlier, you can see we have um, uh, let's see, the walls. There you go. I don't want to spoil anything, but real quick. You can see this angle between this wall and this wall is above 30 degrees. That's why you have a small wall. Otherwise, it, uh, it merged most of the walls together. Um, that were too small. And we have uh, our lighting here, so you can see the light sources. Um, everything is set up exactly the way that it was on uh, Roll20. And we have the magic items. Right? So I can have my magic item um, here or as a journal instead. Uh, where's magic items? There you go. But I prefer to watch them, to look at them from this place here. And you can see the little dots, that's the permission viewer um, module that adds these dots to show you what is being shared with who. And from in the last release I added these uh, things as well. So you can see the abilities and feats of all of the uh, monsters or um, uh, NPCs or uh, playing characters, um, their backpacks, their equipment, uh, the spells. So you have all of the spells as well that get um, that get copied. So if you have something that is um, not in the SRD, then you can uh, uh, have access to it. Um, you can also see the difference between a spell or a bite attack or something like that between the various um, characters right and I believe that's it we have the music the journal entries the scenes the actors um, the only thing that doesn't get uh, copied over is the chat log you have the players as well that are copied but that that's it and uh, it's still exporting the, the, the zip file here. Um, so yeah, uh, github.com slash kakaroto slash r20 exporter for the exporter script and patreon.com slash kakaroto for the converter script. And with that, uh, thank you for watching.